Hello friends, a lot of residents have asked me regarding how to improve the exposure of distal femur articular surface. Often whenever there are multiple fragments in distal femur fractures, especially the articular ones, there is need for an extensive exposure so that every fragment can be visualized. But because of the combination and because of the multiple fragments and because of their displacement, their visualization is often compromised. And in this presentation, I will be showing you some tips by which you can drastically improve your surgical exposure in distal femur articular fractures so first of all the basics so if you see the articulation between tibia and distal femur it looks somewhat like this you see there is curved articular surface of distal femur like this then there is flat articular surface of the tibia and on both medial and lateral side the shape of the condyles is quite comparable and when seen anteriorly we have the petla which often blocks the view so whenever you are approaching distal femur fractures you need to see where you want to see more which part you want to see more so if your articular combination is more on the lateral side that means you want a better visualization on the lateral side then definitely go for the lateral parapetlar approach why because the petla can be retracted medially then you'll be able to see whole of this part I'll show you in the coming slides and if the situation is different that means the medial condyle is more comminuted and you want a better visualization on the medial side then better to go with the medial parapetlar approach because again the petla can be retracted laterally and by that you'll be seeing the required part of the lateral condyle and most part of the medial condyle will be easily visualized so frequently we see this femur fractures in which we have multiple fragments we have the anterior fragments which can be split into the lateral and medial and then we have the posterior fragments or you can say the hofa fragments which are also split into medial and lateral so more or less we can say we have four fragments to visualize that means anteromedial that means anteromedial anterolateral posterolateral and posteromedial and often because of the forces around the knee joint this hofa's fragment tends to get displaced proximally because of the push from the tibia and also because of the pull of the muscles around it the gastrocnemius muscle is inserting somewhere here and it is pulling this fragment spike posteriorly and if you give traction what will happen this fragment will tend to angulate more and that will actually hinder your reduction so traction will not be helpful in such cases where you have these many fragments so conventionally when we use the lateral or medial parapetlar approach the first thing we see are the anterior fragments you see you are able to see the, these two fragments here but the fragments that are posteriorly these fragments are still hidden <clears throat> so you have to split the quadriceps tendon proximally so that it can be repaired further also and you can split it till the part it is tendinous you need not to go proximally to the part in which the tendon disappears you have to remain in the part which is tendinous because you have to repair it further for early rehab of the patient you have to be aware that the posterior condyles the posterolateral and posteromedial are attached directly to the tibia are attached directly to the tibia with the capsule and the ligaments we have the lateral collateral ligament, we have the medial collateral ligament. So every displacement of this fragment, the Hofa's fragment is occurring with the movement of tibia. So the tibia is actually the guiding force that can be used for reduction of these fragments that I'll show you. So once you are done with your anterior exposure, what you can do, you can simply reduce the anterior fragments to the diaphysis or you can say the metaphysis. You need not to go in perfect anatomical reduction. You can align them in a near approximate alignment with the metaphysis with the help of KYS like we have done here. Here this condyle anterior part has been reduced and aligned with the metaphysis and fixed with a K wire. You can use K wire joysticks also so that you can toggle it to a near perfect alignment. But you see we are not able to see the whole fast fragment. We are seeing some glimpse of this fragment but it's not visible properly. So here comes a maneuver. Normally we put a bolster underneath the distal femur or the knee joint. This part the posterior part is blocked from visualization by this anterior fragment and the tibia so if we try to flex it more we'll be able to see it in a better manner but reduction is still difficult so what you can do you can ask your assistant to simply lift the femur up what will happen by that there will be some gap at this fracture site that means you will get some space for maneuvering this fragment to the level of the joint i'll show you so this needs to be done you ask your assistant to lift the femur up by that you will be able to flex the knee joint further and by that you will be able to visualize the posterior fragments like i've shown here so we are able to see this part here but 
again the reduction is not done so what extra needs to be done so you are aware of the anterior drawer test in anterior drawer test we pull the proximal tibia anteriorly so you have to do that kind of maneuver by doing that you will be actually pulling the Hoffa's fragment because I've told you this Hoffa's fragment is having attachment of the collateral ligaments and also of the capsule and by this maneuver the gastrocnemius which is lying posteriorly here will still remain relaxed because we are not extending the knee the gastrocnemius will be stretched only when we extend the knee so here the knee is in flexion so gastrocnemius will remain relaxed and it will not hinder the reduction of this spike so you have to give anterior drawer pull the proximal tibia anteriorly till the point you are able to see that the articular surface of this fragment and this fragment are at the same level like i have shown you here earlier there was gap here and this fragment was quite posterior you see here there was there's huge difference it was quite posterior here but now here it has come more anteriorly because we are giving this anterior drawer maneuver now you can titrate the reduction with the help of a joystick wire you see i placed a joystick wire here by which i can control the rotation of this fragment and the moment the rotation becomes good i can put a reduction clamp to give the compression at that particular point so simple thing you have to give anterior drawer after the assistant lifts the femur up so that there is some clearance of this fragment here from the distal femur and at that moment you have to restore the length of this fragment by anterior drawer maneuver and the moment you see that they are at same level you have to pass your reduction clamp so that there is good compression at the article surface and at that point you can put multiple k wires to secure the reduction so this maneuver is quite simple you see you see one of the assistant is holding the femur while the other assistant is simply lifting the proximal tibia anteriorly and we are able to visualize the joint perfectly whole of this condyle is visible here and reduction has been secured with the help of a reduction clamp and k wires have been used now you see how good compression can be achieved if you want to see more posteriorly you can simply place a langer mac retractor here then you'll be able to see the whole of this condyle this is petla if we want to see more on the other condyle then we can simply detect the petla more towards the lateral side here this is the medial condyle and we have used the medial parapetlar approach and we can simply retract the petlar tendon or petlar laterally to expose the lateral condyle as well so so this is the thing i was telling you can simply retract the petlar more laterally then you will be able to see the lateral condyle as well and the same maneuvers can be performed to expose the posterior part of the condyle and you can simply reduce this by doing the anterior drawer maneuver and the moment the length is restored you can simply place multiple k wires and you can make an articular block under your direct vision often there is confusion what landmark to be used when there is combination in this part how to ensure that the reduction is perfect because there can be some mal rotation of the fragments like you can rotate this fragment in this position and this fragment in this position and because there is combination here and you will not be able to confirm what went wrong you are actually expanding the condyles posteriorly by doing this so what you can do you can simply expose the notch part in notch part you have to see you are able to create this perfect arc which is smooth without any step and that is the anatomical landmark which can tell you whether your reduction is anatomical or not in case of combinated fractures like here you see there was extensive combination here there are multiple cartilages fragment which are lying here 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 and we have used this notch part and the anterior part of the trochlea to see what is the actual articular surface orientation and whenever there are multiple fragments you can simply push those fragments inside impact them inside the articular surface and need not to be anatomical in case of combination because if you place these fragments anatomically the small fragment they will actually migrate and create loose bodies which can result in articular stiffness so a large fragment the major fragment can definitely be placed and put and stabilized with a screw which is independent of the plate or can be passing through the plate also and then you can remove the extra fragments or you can just bury them inside the bone so here you see the article exposure is good and we are simply retracting the petla to expose whole of the medial as well as lateral condyles so this these two simple maneuvers that means the lifting of the femur up and doing the anterior drawer can definitely help in the reduction of the hofas fragment 
this fragment and also for the extensive exposure for the posterior part of the condyles if you want more exposure that means you want to see the posterior part of the condyles because sometimes you have to place screw from posterior to anterior you can simply flex the knee further after reduction securement with multiple k wires then you will be able to get some stability and knee hyperflexion will not hinder your reduction i tend to use 2.5 mm k wires they are rigid and have good stability i do place extra screws for more stability and then place the plate and sometimes we have confusion whether to use the postural medial and postural lateral plates or not <clears throat> so here you have to see the part which is anterior to the notch will be stabilized with your lateral or medial plate so this zone will be occupied by the screws that are coming from the lateral side or medial side but if your fracture is behind this zone then these screws are of no use you have to place extra screws which are going from posterior to anterior or they can be going from anterior to posterior whichever way you want there should not be any issue and if there is a spike here like the one i've shown you here then you have to place a buttress plate in this zone so that there is extra stability but if the fracture is below but if the fracture is below the level of capsule or you can say the gastrocnemius muscle or you can say that there is no fracture spike here then definitely you can place multiple screws in this zone from posterior to anterior or anterior to posterior and try to place extra screws which are perpendicular to the fracture plane like here the fracture plane is somewhat like this so you can place extra screws from the anteromedial side towards the notch like this so they will be functioning as leg screws and while these anteroposterior and or posterior anterior screws will be functioning as the positional screws so i hope this short presentation regarding improvement of exposure in distal femur fractures will be helpful for you in your surgical planning thank you